Welcome to Innovation Insights, the podcast where we explore innovation in all aspects of life. I am your host, Dr. Yolanda Sanders. Let's extend a warm welcome to Chris Surreal. Chris's journey is nothing short of remarkable. Chris is a graduate student at Florida State University, pursuing a Master's of Science in Textiles and Apparel Entrepreneurship. Currently as a graduate research assistant in the Jim Morin College of Entrepreneurship at Florida State, Chris is not just pursuing education, he is living his passion every day. His dedication to blending data analysis and fashion design is groundbreaking. Chris also holds a bachelor's degree in information technology, also from Florida State. His academic prowess is further highlighted by a certification in business analytics from Harvard Business School, which he obtained in August 2023. In 2022, Chris graced the stage with his inspiring 10X talk entitled Stitching Hope into Our Everyday Lives. In this talk, he explored the profound impact of style on our thinking and well being. His insights prove that style is more than just aesthetics, it's a vehicle for transformation and hope. Chris, it's an honor to have you with us today and to share your journey and insights. So thank you for being here and joining us. Yeah, Dr. Sanders, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Thank you for that intro. I don't know who he was talking about for a bit, but I guess it was me. So <laughs> yeah, it was you. It was you. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Found it awesome. Oh, well, you know, the way that we got connected is you reached out to me and I'm so thankful that you did mm-hmm. and found me on LinkedIn and then like, read about this, your accomplishments and I was like, oh my goodness, he was a fabulous guest. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, then we have a, an acquaintance in common and he worked with Dr. Lion Nong, who I know from my time at Iowa State. So. You're, you're actually very popular here in the Jim Ryan College. Yeah, you're a popular so I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> well, he has some great people there. I know a lot of, I know a lot of yeah. Yeah. Well, so you have a great group. So awesome. make sure you tell them hi for me too. <laughs> they'll see, they'll see this. I uh, I will for sure. Oh, so tell us about your experience as a first generation college graduate and how this journey has shaped your fashion and data analysis career, which is yeah, a great for sure. Yeah, it's really interesting. So being first generation, both my parents immigrated here to America from Hayden. And so growing up, they all just told me, be an opportunist, right? The country has a lot to offer. They worked very hard. My mom, she worked as a seamstress. My dad worked in a public bakery for as long as I could remember. And they worked really hard just to get my sisters and I through school. And when it came time for me to go into college, um, really couldn't decide what I wanted to do. My older sister, she's actually uh, graduated with a degree. So when I got to college and just testing out different majors, she finally said to me, hey, check out this thing called data science. If you go into the IT major, I think you might be interested in it. And so, yeah, I got into the IT major and it was awesome. I had a great time there. I used my platform really to help other Christians understand that there's many different ways to make it out of the circumstances we come from. Like a lot of times uh, we don't speak even English at the, ho- at the home. And, you know, coming to Florida State from South Florida, eight hour drive. Being a long ways from home definitely was a culture shock. A lot of different groups of people, the weather, school, and whatnot. So yeah, it was, it was really cool stuff. And I think my experience, excuse me, as a Christian student, this really gave me the grit grind to make it through. Even through it, a lot of the adversity that I faced in undergrad, I knew that I had a dream and my parents were counting on me and I didn't want to let them down. I didn't want to let my family down. And here we are today, right? Uh, with my IT degree, with what I saw my mom doing as a seamstress growing up, um, I kind of just found a way to make it make sense together. So really cool. Well, and and let's explore this a little bit more, your background. I know in your TED talk, you talked about your mother and uh, her work as a seamstress, and now you're combining 
fashion design and the fashion merchandising field and entrepreneurship with data analysis. Right. And what inspired you to do that? So in my time, well, after I graduated from undergrad, I moved to Tampa and I started a menswear styling business. And I recognized that a lot of my clients were coming to me, were wanted to know what are the latest trends or what are other people saying about these clothing items, whatnot. Everyone wants to be the hottest person, right? When, uh, when it comes to your stylist, like make sure I'm the freshest guy in the room. And so to fast track all of that analysis, I was manually doing it, like just going through Reddit, going through Instagram, going whatever social media platform may be, reading through the comments myself. And so uh, I figured, why don't I just try to build something that'll return to me uh, the sentiment around a certain topic and that'll help me better create a narrative for my clients and get them confident in what they were wearing or whatever I was putting them in and whatnot. And yeah, it was really neat. And yeah, I was kind of just really excited to do that. It was the first time I really had like a eureka moment. Oh, wow. Did I really just mix my love for fashion and whatnot with my uh, educational background in, uh, in IT data science, data analytics. And once it started to make sense, I figured, yeah, let me continue building something here. And thus, I'm now at Jim Moran College of Entrepreneurship, working on uh, turning that in, making that into fruition, excuse me, and, uh, you know, working with all the resources that this, this program, wonderful program has to offer. Excellent. You are an innovator. And so you're in the right uh, yeah. field of, um, um, and bringing in data science into styling. That is fabulous. Right, right. For sure. I think, um, I think clothing brands do a lot more with reaching to their customers, their target consumer, hearing them out and really tailoring their marketing and narrative towards the emotions they want to evoke from their customers, get more brand loyalty, better even supply chain, what's selling, um, what's not selling so much, and may you know, further their ESG efforts. That was great. I love that you're, you're thinking about the supply chain and ESG. For sure. Um, because those are two areas that uh, companies always struggle with, and then that would impact the stylist. Yeah, for sure. Um, even bigger than that, me being just from Haiti or my parents being from Haiti, um, I know growing up, there's plenty of times we'd send clothes to Haiti. And you know, growing up, I didn't know any better. I thought, okay, we're just giving clothes to people who are, you know, less fortunate than we are, which I was extremely happy to help. Uh, but then just learning more about the supply chain. So a lot of the time, those clothes just sit there. They don't decompose. They have to get burned messes up the environment and, you know, the air that my people breathe. And so I know I just, I want to help with that area a lot. I think it's something that a lot of people don't realize right. is happening mm -hmm. um, around the world. For sure. So as we think about style, how does style impact people and in our well-being and thinking? Yeah, for sure. I, I'll start with a personal story, right? Um, when, as I was graduating from high school, my younger sister fell ill with leukemia. Fortunately, she passed away right as I was going into my undergrad. As you can imagine, real challenging, right? Um, so throughout freshman and sophomore year, it was just real challenging for me to just heal through that. I never got a chance to really heal through that. And as you can imagine, I'd wake up every morning and kind of just not wanting to be seen, right? And I felt like if I put on something bright, if I put on something, I guess, fresh to say that there'll be all eyes on me and they'll see what I'm really going through, that I'm not happy, uh, not my best self at the moment or whatnot. And honestly, I was thinking backwards. I was thinking about it all the wrong ways. But once I did start updating my wardrobe and putting on nice things, I started to exude that uh, emotions of just joy and happiness and like, yes, I've been through something, but I'm still here kind of thing. And so there's actually a research that was done. I speak about it in the TED Talk by Dr. Hajo Adam and Adam Galinsky. Uh, they exhibited the phenomenon of enclosed cognition, where 
clothing can quite literally change someone's mood and how they perceive themselves based on um, basically the stories or the emotions they tie to a specific clothing. They specifically did it with lab coats. They told, they had three groups. The, regular, the first group, they told them, hey, these, this is a doctor's coat. The second group, they told them this is a painter's coat. The third group, they just had them look at the coat, not put it on or anything. Uh, and then when the first two groups put on the coats, those who put on the doc who put on what they thought was a doctor's coat did better with cognitive abstract theories and whatnot. But those who had on the painter's coat were a lot more creative and whatnot. And quite literally, what you wear can change how you feel about yourself and what you think about the world, how you interact with people, your emotions, your mood, and whatnot. It's, I think the bigger word here is just confidence, right? If you really believe what you have on is almost like a super suit, then you'll be amazed by what you can accomplish, where your mind will take you, where you let your imagination go. Absolutely. There's much of power in appearance impacting how you feel about yourself and what you communicate to others. Right, right, for sure. And I, I don't think any people will take that into account, right? And, hey, I'm just going to put on the shirt. I'm going to walk out the house. But even in that slight decision, you're deciding mm -hmm. this is the person I want to be when I walk out of this you know, establishment, my house, apartment, whatever the case might be. Yeah. Oh, so how do you use your platform and your expertise to share your knowledge with the next generation of students? Uh, because you have such unique knowledge and experiences. That's a good question. I think... What I tried to do first was, I hear how, I think kids these days don't really listen unless you come with some credibility behind you. <laughs> so what I tried to do, so I had early, I hustled early. I think, all right, I'll, let's grow my styling business. I did a few fashion shows, put that on Instagram, whatever, right? Let that go, uh, you know, mini viral or whatever the case might be. And now I can be like, okay, look, here's what I've done. But... Here's what I had to go through to get there kind of thing. I like to believe I'm, I'm just a normal guy. If I can do it, anybody else can really do it. But yeah, so using my platform to really just say whatever you want to, whatever you dream, you can really go for it. I'm just a kid from Pompano Beach, Florida, who had an extraordinary will to be great. And I'm still on that journey. But along the way, I received some accolades. And that's what is what comes with the grind and um, staying true to my purpose and whatnot. And I want the next generation to know that, especially those from uh, underserved communities, those from, again, first generation households where their parents are doing the best they can to get them through school and hopefully get them into college or maybe start their own businesses that, that become really successful. Just that they can do it. They don't always have to be an artist, they don't always have to be an entertainer. Um, you know, find something that you love, become an expert at it, uh, really study it, put the work in, and really the, the world is yours. Uh, my first time ever to Disney World was, what, last year, two years ago? And I stayed at the end for the fireworks, and it was really emotional because you just wish upon a star, right? If you just wish upon a star, you can do whatever you want. You can really be out here, um, you know, live the life that you think you want to live or, and whatnot and so. I think that's how I am using my platform these days, just to spread the good word and letting everyone know or letting the next generation know that they can do it. They can do it. I know it's so uh, these days it's, I say, like the societal effects of, you know, on like, social media and hearing, listening from multiple different sides. The news is everywhere. They're getting bombarded with information up amongst that, right? Eat the meat, throw out the bones, take what you need throw away what's not serving you and, and you know, stay the course for sure. Stay, uh, stay curious and stay, uh, you know, practice ingenuity and yeah, you can do it. I like that. I like that. I do have to say that you're a little too young to be saying these kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way 
Way too young to say. Yeah, that. yeah, that's real. That's real. So, you know, that's real. I can't even argue it. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you truly, seriously, you are an inspiration and a great example Thank to you. your peers and to um, the students that you interact with on campus right. and other places too. So yeah. keep up work. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and I don't take that for granted at all. You know, I know the position that I have, or I sometimes assumed. I know that my reputation and my resume precedes me. And so I just want to make sure I always come through for, for those that are looking at me as an inspiration, letting them know I have hard days too. I, though, again, though I have these accomplishments along the way, not every day has been easy. I had, I even had to go through the mud just to get here, you know, and still I'm working through it every day and I'm getting better. It's, that's definitely the message. Makes sense. Makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. Um, gotta be authentic with it. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So your family, you mentioned your sister passing, and I'm so sorry about that. Thank you. And as we've talked previously, you talked about your family's role in your journey. For sure. Um, would you expand a bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, my, my family's just super supportive, right? Uh, my sisters, my two older sisters, they dealt with me you know, throughout the journey. Of course, they've known me all of my life. <laughs> so, and stay with my parents, man. My parents are uh, uh, real down to earth. So, so being first generation, they really know I wanted to get into fashion. They're like, wait, what's that? You have this good tech job. Uh, what are you thinking about? You will. Um, but what's, once they started to see uh, just the things I was doing in the space, for the TED Talk, of course, fashion shows. In the Tampa area, they started to understand, like, okay, you know, Chris has some traction here. He's making up things happen. There's a lot of eyes on this, and it could be fruitful. And so, yeah, extremely grateful for, uh, you know, for my village and uh, especially my parents and my sisters, my brother in laws, my nieces, you know, those are people that keep me going. Um, yeah, so it's been, been a super neat journey uh, with my sisters, especially like just understanding. Anything about life, really, I can always go to them and ask them questions. Again, they know me at the deepest level. So anything I might have um, any uh, reservations about, I can always go to them and they can help break it down for me. From their point of views and from their experience, uh, where, you know, we all went through the passing of my sister together, right? Even though we all had our own, you know, experiences with it, when we all sat down and finally shared those experiences with each other, it opened up a door for much more understanding and like okay i didn't know you were going through that but we're all going through this at the same time even when i gave my ted talk they're like wow i didn't know it was like that for you and i'm like yeah you know it was rough for all of us but yeah i think you know they've always been in there especially them being older than me they're just like always there willing to give a helping hand um, and we're forever appreciative of my sisters my parents and the whole the whole game that's wonderful i'm still happily that you have a great support system it's, yeah yeah likewise um, likewise <laughs> yeah it's so helpful in life mm-hmm. and it also helps you to be a support to other people for too. sure for sure yeah. yeah um they definitely taught me patience you know um uh, they taught me so much just about uh perspective right some of the lessons my sisters have given me i can help uh give that game to like my friends or you know, to help that to the, my peers or the next generation who's looking up to me, asking me questions about whatnot. I can always reference something my sister said, something my parents have told me. And, um, you know, just continue to pass that, pass that knowledge. Oh, that's great. Yeah, for sure. It's really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, so you're, um, as we talked about, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. Men's, you started a business as a men's stylist. So let's dive into that a little bit more. So, for sure. How did you go about starting this business? And yeah, it was an idea. I had no idea what it was going to look like. I just knew I wanted to do it. Uh, so, I was like, it's just a sneaker buyer reseller for a while. I've always been in the sneaker game shoot, oh. for a long time, still am these days. Uh, oh. Just keeping my ears to the streets, right? Knowing what's hot. You know what I want. Uh, so start off that way. 
I knew eventually I wanted to do like something with clothing, a clothing brand, clothing line. But I was like, hey, I need to get into the industry somehow, some way. And I was like, I need to become a stylist. But when I was in undergrad, a lot of my friends would ask me, hey, I have this graduation photo shoot coming up. I have a date coming up for mm-hmm. our friends or, you know, whatever the case might be. And they asked me to spell them. So uh, when I got to Tampa, after I graduated, I was like, let me play my hand at this. And it was hard. You know, it was hard. Came up from nothing. When I first started, I was you know, doing a lot of things for free. Just trying to test my business model. Trying to test how I wanted to work with my clients. Online clients. In-person clients. Then when I finally started making money off of this, I was like, oh, wow. This is something I can do for real. Then I partnered with a store in Tampa called Ricardo's Menswear, which I'm extremely grateful for. Where now I had actual home base for my clients, right? Somewhere they can shop for clothing. I was somewhere I can get commission and get them a good deal on some, you know, fashionable suits, uh, great quality suits at that. And it just made everything better. Ricardo, he helped, he allowed me to help him with fashion shows. I got to a point where I was helped. I was the one running the fashion shows for him. Uh, like he had to maybe run the store and say, Hey, Chris, get these looks, let's put these together. Take the rack to the fashion shows, style the models, do your thing. With that experience, I was able to do a fast show with Tampa Club at the you know, top floor of the Make of America building in downtown Tampa. I did two fashion shows with them. Great turnout, super fun. And again, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. But yeah, I came up, really brought that the, the business from the mud. And that was about five years. Five years, what, 2018? So when I finally decided to let me come back to school to learn everything, it's 2023. Yeah. So yeah, about five years of really... Wow from the ground, trying to build it up, building a name for myself in the Tampa region and, uh, you know, trusting that the uh, Jim Rance College of Entrepreneurship would allow me to expound upon textile education, entrepreneurship, uh, uh, acumen, and, you know, it's been everything plus stuff uh, that I ever wanted it to be here in Tallahassee, Florida. So I'm um, super excited to be back here. And yeah, entrepreneurship is no walk in the park for sure. Definitely not no walk, walk in the park. But again, like I said before, right, uh, I had a dream and I had a, a, you know, undeniable will and grit. And, um, you know, as, as they will say at FSU, I'm unconquered. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and many people feel that, oh, being a stylist is glamorous and it, you're shopping and you're shopping for people. And, oh, oh that yeah. must be fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and you know, and, that, and that's the thought about the whole fashion business, which it is. There's right. there's a lot of glamour and excitement. But it is a lot of work. For and sure. so, what were some of the challenges as you were founding um, your business? Well, I had no. First of all, on the on the, even on the business formation side, I I had no idea about LOCs, bank accounts, EINs, all that stuff. I had to really learn that. So a lot of times, I had to learn it the hard way. Um, so on that, on the business end, that was its own set of things on the actual styling and fashion side. Well, you're dealing with a lot of different personalities. Um, sometimes someone promises like, Hey, we'll work together next week and next week comes and okay, wait next week. Okay. Next month. There's a lot of those, right? Um, there's a lot of the client asks for something. I put, I, me, I think I put together exactly what they asked for, but then, uh, I know I asked for this, but I didn't really like that. Like, bro, I just spent, you know, six hours doing this. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that was a, that was a, there was a lot of that. It was, again, it was challenging. It was a lot of challenging things, but I learned through it. I learned how to be a better stylist, be a better entrepreneur through that. So I became a better people person through it. Yeah. Um, just really just grateful for the journey. Let's see. There was months where I wasn't making any money. There was months I wasn't seeing nobody. Like no one was calling me and asking for sound service. But then there were months where my phone would just not stop. My phone, my email store would not stop. There's times like that, you know? And so I take the cookies with the straights. And in doing that, it allowed me to not, how do I say this? It allowed me to not put my like whole identity into how the business was going. Right. If it was a down season, it was just a down season. 
It wasn't because I'm not a great stylist. It's not because I wasn't doing enough. I was still, even when I had, even when my phone was booming, I was still doing the same marketing. I was still doing the same kind of styling. I was doing in the music. Nothing was going on, but that was a struggle sometimes. That was a struggle. Wow, what am I not doing right? My kids not progressing. Here. I'm not, you know, making the amount that I target. I put a target for this month, whatever case might be. Um, wow, this is the first time I'm really thinking back at, uh, at all these things for real. Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> it was tough. It was tough, but it's just the great, the good times paid it, paid for itself, you know, paid for all yeah. of that. The fashion shows at the Tampa Club, fashion shows at Western Plaza or whenever we got invited to do a styling for somebody, whenever like a celebrity would come by to be styled, it, it all paid for itself, you know, it all paid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is a lot of work, but it's so rewarding. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So rewarding. That was sure. <laughs> yeah. And you were in business during the pandemic, so I'm sure that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was interesting. That was interesting Ooh. times. That's when I was trying to understand the whole online, right? Mm -hmm. While people were not meeting in person, there was still a, a want to be presentable on the Zooms. Like how, if I have a red background, what color should I be wearing that oh, outfit yeah. pops out? Oh yeah, you get into the color theory and color psychology and whatnot. You get into mm -hmm. color matching and palettes. Yeah, I, yeah, it was, it was interesting to say the least, but we made it through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we made it through. I think it, a lot of times, like most of the time in the pandemic too, I was trying to refine this like, branding and I was refining again what that business model would look like. Yeah. I was trying to I was just, just preparing for when the world did open up again. Like, hey, I'm doing all this online stuff just to practice to what I might look like when what I might sound like even when I'm talking to someone in person. I think online you don't get to see body language, right? You still get to say facial right. you don't get the body language. You don't really get that energy that you feel when you're styling someone in person. And so I think I got the selling part okay during the pandemic or uh, online. But then when we got the person, got to feel like, oh, and a lot of times in person, like say I was styling someone, he'd bring his partner. And then on the, how, the two, how do I work both of them to try to, you know, get, this, get through the styling session, right? Because, yeah, sometimes the partner would be like, I don't like that. And, I'm looking at the, my clients like, do you like this? Is this, you know, but then you have to start talking to both of them and explain why I chose certain items, um, uh, you know, the kind of modes we're going for and whatnot. And so as we did mood boards and we did inspo boards, right? Inspiration boards and whatnot. And so going through the inspirations, going through the mood boards, looking at the tangible items, putting an outfit on them. How do we feel about this? Let's compare it to your mood board. Let's, you know, oh, change a few things around, whatever the case might be. But oh, right. yeah, during the pandemic, I think it was really just the, it was a refinement period more so than, than a interruption period. Let me say that. And that's a great, that was a great way to approach it, to take the time to refine your business. I love that. For sure. Well, and you know, now you're moving into the research world and I know that you've been presenting some research. Mm -hmm. at, um, yeah. Are you able to talk about some of the research that you're working on? Yeah, yeah I can speak on them briefly. So uh, Dr. Nam, Dr. Lion Nam and I presented at USOSB in Birmingham, uh, Alabama, um, the United States Association of Small Businesses and Entrepreneurs. Uh, they had their conference in Birmingham. And, uh, we presented two researches. One uh, was about the 17 sustainable development goals. Um, and how they're interpreted and uh, adopted by small businesses in Florida with the hope that the, the findings from that can then be spread out to the rest of the United States, small businesses throughout the rest of the country so that not only increase Florida score, but just the whole country score and on the SDG index. And the second one was about AI and pedagogy as it relates to fashion design, product development, and entrepreneurship. So how are we utilizing AI and fashion to enhance the students' interactions and learning, as well as professors helping them with their curriculum and whatnot? What do you think about AI? I think AI is super cool. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a dope tool. Um, 
it's AI at the end of the day is programmed by a person. So as long as it's programmed ethically, used ethically, I think it, it'll definitely take giant leaps for mankind at least. Yeah. yeah. I like it too. I like it too. Yeah, for sure. Have you envisioned how AI could impact like the world of styling? World? Yeah, there's you know, a few businesses doing like, AI styling already, right? Yeah. Someone like puts in their Instagram page and the AI would then look at their images and kind of determine or if or analyze what their style might be for the next season and then the company would send subscription boxes of items, the pieces that they believe the, the consumer might want, might like. And yeah, I think AI in the styling world is really interesting because uh, modes change all the time. People's sentiment towards a certain, people change their styles all the time. So it'll be, it's real interesting how an AI can adapt to all of those things, right? And I think that's the bigger picture I'm interested in, right? How does AI interpret sentiment of different brands and then that sentiment is then brought to like a design team our development team marketing team to say yeah. hey this is what this is what our our target market target audience is thinking and like feeling about our brand about this piece about our supply chain about these products we're using right about whatever the case might be but yeah ai in the styling world it's being used now, but yeah, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. I think there's a, there's much opportunity for it to go further for sure. So we'll see how that all yeah. is about in the future. Here. Absolutely. And I, I think there was a time when people felt that, oh, if you had a stylist, you must be a celebrity right, right. at the, you know, that uh, level. But now, and with AI and technology, uh, a lot of people can have a stylist there. Sure. And as you said, it can uh, help navigate changes in you know, attitudes, beliefs. Um, right. And also your body changes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, yeah I completely I agree. Yeah. I, 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 yeah I, I dealt with that a lot as a stylist too, right? Clients, <laughs> clients sometimes like, oh man, I didn't you know, work out as much as I wanted to, or like whatever the case might be, it's like, man, you, you still deserve to be confident in yourself. You still deserve to step out as your best self, regardless of that, right? If that was whatever the case might be, you deserve to be proud of yourself. And if you want to make some changes or whatever, let, that's something you can deal with on your own, but don't let that, don't let that ruin your day, your week, your month, whatever the case might be, you know? And even the other way around, sometimes my clients, oh man, I did great and I lost 25 pounds. Like, awesome. Let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. Let's do some mm -hmm. Show it off to so you look good or whatever they were happy or excited about either direction. I still believe that they should, um, anybody really, not just my clients, you know, it's, it's all about just being confident in yourself and being your best self for sure. Oh, so. Yeah, as you think about technology and your research and your background, where do you see yourself going? That's a big <laughs> question, man. I think I see myself becoming like a uh, thought leader in the space. Uh, I see myself as someone that other researchers can come to, other designers, marketers can reach out to when they want to collaborate, if we want to just brainstorm, because I need help brainstorming all the time, right? I just need to sometimes just get all my ideas out on the table and put these puzzle pieces together. But yeah, I see that. Of course, I, I see business going well, whatever business that might be, analysis, building my, I see that going well. I see myself graduating from school. <laughs> yeah. I think most, most uh, importantly though, I see myself as, um, you know, just a man, fallible, right? I make mistakes and I go through both things like everybody else. And even with, you know, the success that come in the future, I just want, again, the next generation from communities like I grew up in Papano Beach, right? Uh, my parents, again, my parents worked really hard. We were in like poor and things, but it was challenging growing up there and it was challenging, uh, you know, seeing what like some of my friends had to go through and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I just want them to know that 
like I said before, I can't, I can't stress this enough. Like really just follow a dream because I, I was just a kid. I was just a kid and now I'm here. And it, it almost seemed like it happened so fast. But then when I think back, it's like I can remember all the, like the paradigm shifts, all the pivots and like all the decisions that got me here, whether good or bad, right? Um, and so, yeah, I see myself just as a guy that's here to help, here to help and to make a change somewhere. Well, you're already making a change. Ah, uh, thanks. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I do want to circle back on a comment that you made. Yeah. Um, because sometimes there's a perception that creativity and innovation, you know, it just happens and someone just comes up with an idea. Right. <laughs> right. Happens. And you mentioned collaboration. Yeah, yeah. And putting the ideas out there on the table and having someone to bounce ideas off of. Would you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah. I think the biggest part of that whole thing is no one gets it done alone. Like everyone has a team, everyone has a squad that does all the things behind the scenes that not everyone sees. Um and so, yeah, I think throughout this uh, you know, this conversation, this discussion, I've thought I've said many people or, or things that have helped me get to where I am today. Um, and so wherever that the case might be, at some point we sat down and talked about ideas and I had to get their thoughts. Again, eat the meat throughout the bones. Sometimes it was gibberish, but sometimes it was nuggets. And, and yeah, that collaboration, I'm no one without it. I'm not who I am today. It's true. I don't get the TED talk without it. Don't become a stylist without it. Hey, this is an idea I'm working on. What do you think? And hearing like, well, you did this all the time in college. You should try it out. We think you can do it. You know, whatever the case might be. Shoot, even that. Just motivation on days I don't feel like it. On yeah. days I'm just like, man, I, I don't want to. Uh, I am think I'm going to cancel this appointment today. Nah, bro. No. <laughs> Go for it. Um, or, you know, on days or I feel like I'm on my high horse. Hey, Chris, you know, be humble. You know, let's, <laughs> let's remember where we come from. It's, it's good to celebrate these good times, but let's remember what the vision is, right? Let's remember the goal. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, that collaboration is extremely important. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the people I've worked with, as far as like branding and marketing, shoot, as far as my first couple clients, the people I was doing things for free, they're just all my friends. Mm -hmm. that, hey, you can style me. I'll put this on my platform. I'll tag you, whatever case might be. Yeah, and then as far as ideas, like mentors, that's helped me along the way. Yeah, yeah. that collabor collaboration piece, excuse me, is so important. So important. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts on that because I agree with you too. And we need people. I think we found that out during the pandemic, how much yeah. we need each yeah, other. Yeah, yes, for sure. For sure. Like, that's, that's real. That is very real. And how someone's to bounce ideas off of and think things through. And yes, yeah, power. yeah. I think a lot of the times we have a, I know I can speak for myself. I have a good, I think I have a good idea sometimes. And then I finally sit with somebody and it's like, ah, I, I missed that because I was so excited. I missed the holes. I missed the gaps. I was so excited to get things running. Like, okay, let's get realistic about it. I, and to this day, I, while I'm a big dreamer, but I'm extremely realistic and I know that it takes real hard work to, to make things happen. Yeah. yeah, that collaboration piece is, is real important. So I keep perspectives and respected perspectives too on top of that you know all right well and you just can't do it all yourself too yeah. you need others really, to, to really can yeah it's just it's tough out here <laughs> yeah oh uh, well you know for our listeners that are wanting to collaborate with you or follow your journey what are some of the best ways to get in contact yeah right now the best ways are, are linkedin um yeah, I think that's, that's the only platform I'm really active on these days. And so, yeah, LinkedIn, Chris Surreal, and uh, you'll find me. Yeah, yeah that makes sense because I, I know the people that you're working with there at Florida State. I know you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. I know they're, you're busy. <laughs> it's busy, but it's fun busy. It's a fun busy. Yeah. It's a productive yeah. busy. Let's say that much. Yeah, well, they're a great group again. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Really happy to be here. For sure. Well, the last question I asked every guest, it's mm -hmm. the, the main question. Yeah. How do you define innovation? Let's see, innovation. Um, 
I think everyone has their own story, right? Everyone has their own story, their own perspective, their way they came up in life to become who they are today. Then I think that inspiration comes from how do you take that experience and apply it to somewhere in the world? The fashion industry probably hasn't seen someone like me before, right? That has a background in data analytics or has been a stylist before and whatnot. I mean, they've seen a whole bunch of people, but never Chris Surreal. Uh, so whoever you are, put that into, put that whole essence of who you are into that thing that you love or the thing that you're passionate about. Because I promise no one's ever seen that in that space. Uh, no one's going to do it like you because of your unique perspective, your unique experiences. And I think that's where innovation comes about when uh, someone puts their whole person, like, I'm okay about talking about my family. I'm okay about talking about my friends. I'm okay with talking about the struggles that got me here because that's all part of my story. And that's what I bring to this space. And yeah, I think that's, that's innovation right there. The ingenuity of connecting the dots and making it make sense for you. And, you know, once you can do that, someone's going to catch on. Yeah. That early adopter is going to catch on and run with this. Thank you for that definition. Yeah. 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 No worries (laughs) at all. No worries at all. (laughs) <laughs> well, I truly appreciate having you here. Uh, it is just been wonderful to have you. And, uh, you know, it's been enlightening to explore the fusion of data analysis with fashion design, your educational journey, your vision, and your unique approach to styling. And wow. uh, so thank you. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. This was awesome. It was so fun. Uh, again, I, I before I even met you, uh, your name, I've heard it many times before, before I introduced myself to you. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm kind of starstruck even being here right now. So it's really awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> but thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. This was an awesome conversation. I, I look forward to, you know, the way this could, the way this is, when it's put out for everyone to, to hear. And, and I love what you're doing with the innovation, the Innovation Insights podcast, the whole platform. I love what you're doing with it. And so uh, I wish you all the best with that. And again, I'm, I'm just so happy to be here and I'll see everything you work on. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, to our listeners, I hope this conversation has sparked new ideas and inspired you to explore intersections of your passions and professions. May Chris's journey and insights motivate you to combine diverse skills like data analysis and fashion design in your own pursuits. Remember, innovation isn't just about technological advancements. It's about leveraging your distinct talents and viewpoint to create impactful and transformative change in our fields. I'm Dr. Yolanda Sanders, and I'm signing off until our next episode. Keep innovating, keep dreaming, and keep making a difference.